Hey, it's Matt from Tradesman Digital Marketing. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through ad groups inside Google Ads. I'm gonna go over the best practices for ad groups and the way we actually design them and for Tradesman Digital Marketing and all of our clients, and essentially give you what I would be doing inside of an ad group on a regular basis, and give you the best tips and tricks for having a successful ad group inside Google Ads. Now to start off, uh, I, have, I often get asked the question, how many ad groups can I have? And really, you can have as many relevant ad groups as you want inside Google Ads, provided they're relevant to your actual campaign. I see no reason why you can't have as many as you want. That being said, I wouldn't go overkill and like purposely have hundreds of ad groups because that's just going to waste a whole bunch of time. Uh, but really, you can have as many as you want. A few dozen inside your campaign is completely fine. I don't see any reason that should be an issue. So now, what are the actual tips and tricks that I would recommend inside Google Ads and the best practices for ad groups? And really, uh, there are quite a few. And <laughs> And to start off, I really want our ad groups to be as specific to our campaign as possible. So for this one, it is pool installation. So I'm not going to be putting pool products inside this. I'm going to be putting everything related to pool installation. So for this, I would actually change this to fiberglass pool installation. Um, we could also add in, you know, vinyl pool installation, backyard pool installation, pool installation, pool builders, pool contractors, um, pool co installation companies near me. And by actually segmenting all of these out and relating them back to our campaign, uh, we're really we're able to really easily optimize all of our ad groups inside Google Ads. It's super fast, it's super efficient, and we see amazing results with it. And this is because we can quickly identify an ad group or a set of keywords that isn't working well, either fix it or get rid of it as quickly as possible. That way uh, it's not weighing down the account and we're able to get really good results with it. Uh, that being said, inside every ad group, like I said, you can have as many ad groups as you want, but I would recommend a specific number of ads for your ad group. So inside your ad group let's click on pool contractors and right now we can see our search keywords but i'm going to come over here to ads and i'm going to recommend having at least three ads this one only has one inside of it uh, but you should always have three responsive search ads inside every single ad group if you're doing a call only ad campaign i would still recommend having uh, three call only ads but if you're doing a general search campaign i would definitely recommend having three responsive search ads and this is because Google is going to take all these ads, it's going to cycle it, and sometimes Google can be a bit finicky with this. And you may write an amazing ad, but Google, for whatever reason, just doesn't like it and it goes, yeah, I'm not going to run it. And then your, you know, your account isn't getting any impressions, it's not getting any clicks, and you're like, why, why am I not seeing any leads? And it's just because Google didn't like the one ad. So it's always good to have three ads. It allows Google to A-B test all these headlines. And with all these headlines, I believe you can have 15 headlines in every single ad group. Am I right on that one? I am right on that one, 15 headlines in every single ad group. So as you can see here, we have 15 different ones and it has four descriptions as well. Uh, you really want to have as many descriptions as possible and as many headlines as possible. And with three ads, you're gonna have 45 different headlines. You're gonna have 12 different descriptions. You're, there's just going to be so much for Google to A-B test and chances are Google is going to find a winning combination and you're going to have a really high click-through rate if you fill out all the headlines and all the descriptions. That being said, please fill out all these descriptions. I only filled out two out of four here, so please click the plus icon down here and hit it again, fill out these descriptions and allow Google to A-B test as much as possible. And the reason we want Google to A-B test and get a high click-through rate is because the higher our click-through rate is, the more likely we are to have a higher quality score, which brings our cost per click down because Google lights our ads. And then with our lower cost per click, we're able to get more clicks, which leads to more leads, which leads to a whole bunch more account success and you know generally a happy business owner because you're getting a whole bunch more leads. Uh, so that's really important. Have as many headlines as possible, have as many descriptions as possible. Now, the reason and I recommend three though is we don't want to overwhelm Google three generally seems like the general rule the general principle Google recommends and I tend to follow that and after about a week or so uh, and it really depends on your data maybe it's even a month maybe two months depending on how much data you're getting into you're gonna come in here and you're going to essentially kill off the loser and keep the winner so say we have three ads in here this ad is just not doing well uh, what I would recommend doing is actually copying this so we're going to actually copy we're gonna hit we're gonna hit the uh, check mark area here. We're gonna hit edit and copy and then hit paste. And what we're gonna do is actually duplicate out this ad. We're gonna hit done and we're gonna click on pause new ads after pasting and we're gonna hit this as well uh, because we want to actually duplicate this and then we're gonna hit paste 
and we're good to go when it comes to actually copying out our ad. Now, what you're actually going to see is you're going to see three ads. Uh, the first one is going to be probably winning. It's doing well. It's getting a whole bunch of clicks. It's getting the bulk majority of it. And then you're going to see one ad that's doing all right. Maybe it has like five, six clicks. I don't know. Uh, and then you're going to see one ad that's essentially dead. It's got like one click, 80 impressions. It's not doing anything. What you're going to do is you're going to find that ad and just come in here and literally pause it and then you're going to duplicate just like I did and you're going to adjust most of the headlines adjust the descriptions and then turn it on and allow it to run and try and beat the champion ad which is the actual winning ad that's getting all the clicks all the impressions and constantly try and beat your click-through rate and by doing this you're going to have a much higher click-through rate over time you're going to have a lot more account success overall and you're going to be much happier with your google ads account so that's my recommendations for ads now, when it comes to actual keywords inside of our ad group, all we have to do is click on our keywords. And there's a few things I recommend for keywords inside of our ad group. And what I like to do is get at least 10 clicks before making a decision on a keyword. If a keyword has 10 clicks, no conversions whatsoever, so you haven't got any leads, I turn that off. And all you have to do to turn it off is hit the little green button here, hit pause, and it will turn off the keywords so you will no longer show for it, uh, which is really nice because we don't want to waste any money. That being said, say it only has one conversion out of 10 clicks. And this can get a little, I can be more lenient with one conversion because at least it's showing some leads. Uh, and it really depends on if we have a lot of search traffic or not. If we have a lot of search traffic and I don't really care about particular keywords, I'll pause it. My general rule is if it has one conversion or less, so one or zero conversions, well, after 10 clicks, I turn it off. But if we're really struggling for search volume, I might be more lenient and I might keep it on it if it has one conversion. Uh, again, this depends on your situation. If it has two or more conversions, so you're getting 20% conversion rate, keep this keyword. This is a winning keyword. We want to keep it. Generally, if you do this over a period of a month or two, you're going to have a very successful account with a conversion rate of over 20%, which is just absolutely amazing compared to all the competition. Now, there are a few other things inside your ad group you should know about. I generally recommend exact match. As we can see here with our match type, it's all in phrase match. So I would change this all to exact match. So all you have to do is click on the actual uh, phrase match here and then come down to exact match. And this really narrows the amount of search terms you're available to appear for, which is nice because we don't want to appear for anything. Google recently updated their match type uh, system like four or five months ago. And I don't really like it. I think it gives phrase match too much leniency and it really shows for everything. Uh, exact match I find has just been doing absolutely phenomenal over the past four or five months. And I really like putting all of our keywords to exact match. That being said, there are certain scenarios where you can't go with exact match because there's just not enough search volume. But if you have enough search volume, I definitely recommend exact match. Now, one thing to note about exact match is that there are still search terms, even though it is very restrictive and you are going to only be targeting, let's say like swimming pool contractors here, there are still search terms you won't want to appear for. So every week, uh, and again, depends on how much data you're getting into the account, but I generally recommend once a week, coming in here to the search terms, there's gonna be a long list of all the search terms people have typed into your account, and you're literally gonna scroll through all here, you're gonna find the ones you don't wanna appear for, so maybe it's you know swimming pool installation products or swimming pool installation chlorine, something like that, that you just don't want to appear for, it's not actually what you're going for, and you're going to copy that, and you're gonna come over here to negative keywords, and you're going to hit the big blue plus icon, and I generally recommend pasting it at a campaign level, but you can paste it at the ad group level depending on your situation. And then you're just gonna type it in here. So let's say we don't want to appear for a pool, uh, pool products, it's not something we want to appear for. And you can put this at a broad match level if it's very vague, uh, like pool products we don't want to appear for, that's fine. You could leave that as broad match. Uh, if it's something more specific like pool installation chlorine, I would put that as exact match because it might overlap and it might think that, hey, we don't want to appear for any pool installation uh, and that would really hurt our search volume. So depending on your keyword, uh, negative keywords, you can really adjust your actual match type. So if we wanna leave it in broad match, we don't have to do anything. If we wanna put it in exact match, we just have to put our actual brackets around here and then come down to the actual save function, hit save, and we have added in our negative keywords so we will no longer appear for pool products, which is really nice. Now on the final thing about best practices inside Google Ads uh, is landing pages. And really landing pages can make or break your campaign. We don't have any in here yet, uh, but a nice little thing to do and to figure out if your actual campaign is doing well is to add the actual landing page experience to our keywords. And as we can see, we have swimming pool contractors, uh, pool contractors near me. And if we scroll across, we can see landing page experience and landing page experience history. 
And essentially what this means is does Google like your ads? And I have had tons of accounts where our landing page experience is just, you know, poor or below average, and we're still getting 40% conversion rates. So it doesn't matter a tremendous amount, but it is a good identifier if your account isn't doing well. We really want to aim for at least average or above average, and this will really help with quality score. And the way we do that is by having a dedicated landing page, making sure it's built out properly, making sure it quickly answers the customer's problem. It gives them all the information they want, and they can quickly make a decision and call us or email us or whatever we want the call to action to be. And the way we go about adding this to our actual columns, in case you don't know, all we have to do is come over here to columns. Uh, we hit modify. And then we're going to come down here to quality score and we're just going to check off landing page experience and landing page history. And this is nice because landing page history, if we make any changes to our landing page, uh, we actually know the past experience. So say we uh, update our landing page and we know that our landing page isn't really good. It's like poor quality. Uh, and then it jumps up. It just shows the difference that ha it has made over time. So that's nice. All we have to do is hit save there and then it will appear once we scroll over. So that's nice to look at. Another nice thing is ad relevance as well. And generally we want this to be average or above average just to show that our keywords are really matching our ad copy and Google likes the actual message match between our ads, our keywords and our landing page. And if we have all three things, we have a very good message match between our landing page, our ad copy and our keywords, chances are we're gonna have a very successful account. So those are all the best practices that I would recommend for the ad group. There are a whole bunch of different other things I would recommend doing at the campaign level to make your account even more successful. Uh, I'm sure I'll do a video on that soon enough, uh, but really all the things we want to manage inside the ad group are keywords, landing page, and ads. I would recommend leaving everything else for the campaign level, extensions, uh, advanced settings, ad schedule, locations, all of that I would do at the campaign level. Uh, I really wanna keep our ad groups very basic and really narrow down on our customer's problem. I don't wanna get over complex because if you get over complex at the ad group level, it becomes too minute, you're spending too much time at the ad group level and you're just spending too much time on changing the little things that really don't make a big difference. Difference. So that's it for ad group best practices. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns about it, leave it down in the comment section down below. I'd be happy to answer it. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day and take care.